It's been about three weeks since the audition camps in Beloit, and the little town of Winnebago is the site now for two big Phantom Regiment camps. The Color Guard is here for a second round of auditions and to begin learning the visual elements of the 2005 show. Phantom Regiment Director Pat Seidling is also here to oversee the progress. Well, it's December 12th and we're at Winnebago High School just west of Rockford. We're having a Color Guard camp weekend, uh, Thanksgiving weekend a few weeks back. We asked back 50 girls out of about 90 that showed up, 85, to show up and audition. We asked back about 50 and 30 could make it in this weekend to get a second look. We had about six new ones show up that weren't at auditions and we gave them a fair shot this weekend to try their hand at it. So this weekend's really a refresher course and let's reevaluate some people because the goal this weekend is we're gonna divide them into three tiers. Tier one are the girls that we're officially offering a spot to. Tier two are the girls that if they keep coming back, they'll slide into the remaining spots. And tier three are the ones that uh, kind of the second round of cuts. We're gonna have to send them on and maybe try again next year. So uh, this is kind of really the second round of whittling it down to a manageable size. Since this is the only color guard camp until spring, every minute spent learning the routine is critical. An early surprise in camp is the absence of Sharon Underdahl, who just a few weeks ago was looking forward to this camp. Between November camp and this camp, um, I have uh, corresponded with Sharon through email and so forth, and uh, she couldn't attend this camp because of exams and this is the time of the year. She'll have to do some work on her own to kind of make up for that time and to be sure that you know she's putting that time in. So when she comes in April to audition for that spot, she'll know what to have you know worked on from December to April. Aaron Jones is also not in this camp. If you remember from auditions, Aaron said she might not be able to afford to come back in December. Aaron's in, in a similar situation where she's at school. She was um, down in Texas, and uh, you know she has exams this week. Um, very talented young lady. She comes here to, to audition with a different background. She's ha you know she has an experience where she. She understands uh, the expressive e efforts, the, the movement principles that really help her with the um, equipment choreography. Um, so she has a certain inner strength that really, I think, will allow her to really fit in well with this color guard here at Regiment, the, the aura that the girls present. She's a very focused girl um, and, and, and very mature, so I think she'll do the best she can in which to you know, be able to financially afford it and still go back to school. Uh, after the summer. Work begins on the visual effects. The Phantom Regiment Color Guard will tell a story through the use of movements and props such as flags and rifles. Each movement is precisely choreographed and will eventually blend seamlessly and accentuate the marching from the rest of the Corps. Phantom Regiment has had a new set of color guard instructors for the last three years. Allison Kentner has learned from all of them and thinks this year's are the best. Actually, I'm excited for the show. I love Gershwin. I think our music's going to be great. I think it's going to be a real crowd pleaser. And I'm excited for us to be a great color guard. No 10th place color guard like last year. Um, but I'm just really good, excited for our guard to be good this year. And to Ann Cohn to the 45. Three, because this nine, is the four, only Color Guard camp until spring, five, the instructors eight, came up with a unique way for the girls in camp and the ones who could not attend to learn the visual effects for the 2005 show at home. We're going to videotape some of the technical um, exercises that we want the girls to work on. They'll have the ability to work from that video between now and April, so when they come back in April, they already have that. Um, if they put the time and they've already had the experience working on the technical aspect so we can just kind of pick up where we left off from December. The following weekend, the brass, pit, and drum lines were invited to Winnebago High School to start learning the 2005 Phantom Regiment show. 
As the kids check in and take care of their financial obligations, Corps Director Pat Seidling explains the importance of the weekend. Well, here we are. It's December 19th, and we're back at Winnebago High School just west of Rockford, and we're having what we call our second round of auditions and our first music camp of the season. In other words, we're trying to accomplish two things this weekend. At our auditions camp, we had about 380 people, and we whittled that down to around 200. Now, at this camp, we need to get it down to around the 150-member mark, give or take. We also need to get going on our music production, so we've handed out the entire brass show, all 10 minutes of our George Gershwin show. Uh, it's been a really great weekend. The music's wonderful. Uh, we've really got a lot of talent here. It's been tough. The second round of auditions is, is not, a, not an easy one. We could actually probably have two drum corps out of this pool right now. It's Friday night, and two musicians learn the hard way that the best sleeping locations on the gym floor are already taken. Meanwhile, members of the drumline section are busy at work assembling and tuning the xylophones and timpani drums. It's also the first time the musicians get to meet their caption head. Hey guys, first before we start, I just want to say hello. I'm Paul, and uh, I know most of you, but I don't know everybody. Uh, I didn't get a chance to audition everybody, but we will see you play this weekend. There's, there's quite a lot of bit of music that's, that is not just kind of parts to go along with the horn stuff, but there's a lot of solo stuff that you need to play. There's one thing to do that you need to play tomorrow by 3 p.m. Another caption head starts to warm up his brass section. They start off with stretches to get their uh, body woken up after sleeping on a gym floor for the morning. Uh, we stock, uh, start off with a little breathing. Uh, we do the breathing gym by Pat Sheridan and Sam Flakin, who are uh, tuba teachers down in Arizona, uh, which really gets the students focusing in on the muscles, the diaphragm, the chest, uh, and how we want them to flow the air smooth in to smooth out. Uh, and then we start off with a little bit of buzzing, get the uh, lips activated and uh, the ears working without the, the instrument. Uh, and then we put it on the horn and we kind of alternate back and forth between buzzing on the mouthpiece, doing some breathing exercises and uh, lip flexibilities and articulation exercise. And uh, after about half an hour of that, we're pretty warmed up, ready to go, and we get started into the music. Or initiate our first step on the and of four. So it'll be one, two, one and two and three and four and step. So that way our heel can hit right on the downbeat. Drumline instructors have taken their musicians into a gym to begin teaching them proper marching technique and form. Wait. Back in the music room, work is underway to learn the Gershwin music that will make up the Phantom Regiment 2005 show. Both songs, American in Paris and Rhapsody in Blue, will highlight this group of musicians. 90 degrees. So basically we can have that and put it in the class. As the brass learns proper technique and form from the instructors, we are introduced to a rookie trumpet player for Phantom Regiment. <laughs> My name is Darian Sanders. I'm from Lexington, Kentucky. I go to the University of Kentucky, and I've been playing the trumpet for about 10 years. I'm heavily in the high school marching band and high school concert band. And so when I teach, I teach full year round. And so, um, to choose, to choose to do drum corps, I had to basically find a sub for myself for the summer part of the year. And not being able to work, my family really didn't understand that me wanting to pay some, somebody to go somewhere and travel around the world instead of sitting at home and working and making money for the rest of the school year. This camp has really been about all music, as he told us, and probably the next two camps will be all about music too. 
Despite the cold, Frank has made the trip north and tells us about the weekend with the drumline and how all eyes might not be on the sheet music. The weekend's going pretty good. Uh, it's very, very cold here. Uh, once again, I'm from Texas and I can't stand the cold weather. Uh, the drum line is pretty much set right now. There's uh, a few extra hanging on just so we can have uh, some backup if needed. Uh, but it's looking very good. Friendships are starting to bond. Uh, everybody's starting to get to know each other as well as they can because that's what needed to play as well as you can and march as well as you can. Uh, another thing that happens is guys might start uh, getting attracted to girls there in the camps and find who they might want to uh, sit with for the summer or uh, be close to. Uh, relationships do start, maybe not so much early on, but uh, more towards the spring. Personally, I had a relationship last summer and we tried to work it out long distance, but it just couldn't happen. She's in California, I'm in Texas. Because so much progress has been made this weekend, the camp will end with the entire drum line playing together. Today the core is getting together at 11 o'clock to play uh, the opener and hopefully more of the show. The drums only have the opener. Uh, we're supposed to see what it sounds like all together and get, a, get an idea of the show design. 